What would happen if you removed all of the fluoride from the drinking water? The completely eye-opening results would surprise you. But before we get into that, what is fluoride? Fluoride is a negatively charged ion from the element fluorine. That means it has more electrons than it has protons. It's represented with the chemical symbol F and it looks like this. You commonly hear fluoride being in our tap water, but it is actually also found in groundwater, tap water, basically anywhere where water comes in contact with rocks, you'll find fluoride in it. It can even be found in bottled water. So what gives? Why is there fluoride in the water anyway? To find out, we have to go back all all the way to the early 1900s to an event called the Colorado Brown Stain Epidemic. In Colorado Springs, Colorado, a young dentist named Frederick McKay discovered something unique about this town. A lot of the children he worked on had this strange brown staining on their teeth. This type of staining would look like if you had eaten dark chocolate. However, he soon discovered that the teeth were highly resistant to tooth decay. You see, despite our high sugar diet nowadays, childhood tooth decay was a lot more of a problem back then. In fact, it was such a problem that even children from wealthy backgrounds were affected. McKay soon traveled across country to see if any other towns had Colorado brown stain. He soon found that a small town in Arkansas had it, but the surrounding towns didn't. A chemist named H.V. Churchill soon found a relationship between the levels of fluoride in the water and the occurrence of Colorado brown stain. Colorado brown stain would soon be renamed as fluorosis. The researchers know noticed that the level of fluoride in the water had a significant impact on how resistant teeth were to tooth decay. So a man named H. Trenley Dean and colleagues soon set up an experiment. They wanted to see if you can reach a sweet spot of water fluoridation where you would get all the benefits of cavity prevention without the downsides of fluorosis. The first place to get this fluoridated water was Grand Rapids, Michigan on January 25, 1945. The results were published five years later showing a massive reduction in cavities without any of the fluorosis. This experiment was soon replicated in Canada, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and the UK. Since everywhere across the world were reporting successful results with their water fluoridation, it soon became policy in the United States by 1951. And by 2006, around 70% of our water is fluoridated. So what would happen if overnight we got rid of 70 years of fluoridation in the water? First, let's figure out how fluoride works. Fluoride usually comes as three forms. So sodium fluoride, fluorosilicic acid, and sodium fluorosilicate. Imagine your teeth are like castles. Sometimes the bad guys, such as bacteria, attack the castles in order to break them down. This is how cavities start. So fluoride acts as your repair crew. It does this by adding special minerals to your teeth that fix holes and damages. Not only do the minerals fix the damage, but they also prevent new damage from being created. Over the past 70 years, fluoride has been an essential part in dental health. You see, tooth decay is one of the most prevalent chronic diseases among children and the elderly, and oral diseases are the fourth most expensive to treat and chronic dental diseases can have long-lasting aesthetic effects and health effects. The effects of fluoride in the drinking water has been one of the most studied things in the past century, and there has been little to no negative side effects found. But despite that, there is so much controversy around it. Let's clear up a few things first. Like I said before, there are naturally occurring instances of fluoride in river water, lake water, and many other sources. There are also natural amounts in our food, such as seafood, fruits, vegetables, nuts. It is true that too much fluoride can have negative effects, but the amount we consume on a daily basis is way too little to do any harm. When it comes to something being toxic or not, it's not about the thing as much as it is how much of the thing. There are natural and organic foods we eat every day that contain small amounts of poison, but since it's too little, it can't do anything to harm us. And no, I'm not talking about pesticides. Apple seeds and cherry pits contain small amounts of cyanide, which is a poison known for causing seizures, coma, vomiting, and even...
but it's in such small amounts that it basically can't do anything to you. It would take eating over 80 apples in one sitting in order to begin to see any negative effects. And that is far from the only thing that we eat that is quote unquote poisonous. But people do just fine because they're in such trace amounts that they can't do any harm. And this is very well studied. And I just gave examples with things that are naturally occurring with no human tampering whatsoever. So what about fluoride? Fluoride is currently regulated to be between 0.5 and 1 milligram per liter. Your average fluoride toothpaste contains 1500 milligrams per liter. And even that amount is not enough to cause serious injury or now, granted, it's not advisable, don't eat it. It is enough to cause fluorosis, but that's if you eat the entire tube in one sitting. Most poisoning reports of fluoride toothpaste are usually upset stomach or nausea, and it's usually done by toddlers who think toothpaste is good to eat. Real serious harm is usually seen when you eat this amount of fluoride for an extended period of time, usually months. Other controversies about fluoride have come from either misunderstanding or misreporting. There have been a few studies about the consumption of fluoride and a drop in IQ in children. However, there were several problems with those studies. First of all, those studies didn't control for other toxins that those children were exposed to, such as lead and arsenic. Those studies also didn't track fluoride in drinking water, but other fluoride sources in high amounts, such as indoor coal burning with no ventilation. Other studies have been conducted and have found no correlation between fluoride in the drinking water and drop in IQ. There has also been a lot of doubt about fluoride's effectiveness with tooth decay, but it has been shown that fluoride has both topical benefits and systemic benefits. Topical for rebuilding enamel and systemic for strengthening teeth that form under the gum line. Fluoride from toothpaste can be rather inconsistent, especially when a person is eating all day, but drinking water regularly helps with consistent timing with eating habits. There's also the notion that fluoride is in the drinking water for government mind control, which if you think of it, it's quite ridiculous because because a lot more people drink alcohol than water, and I know a lot of you are alcoholics and cry yourself to sleep at night. So what happens when we remove the fluoride? Well, some places have tried this and this is what happened. The city of Calgary in Canada removed fluoride from their water in 2011. As a result, the use of IV antibiotics for dental related infections in children went up by 700%. The cavity rate in children increased by 65%, many of whom would require serious treatments or dental surgery. In Calgary, there was also a 25 to 35% increase in dental cost for families. Not only did it end up being a health cost, but a financial cost to the city. Because of this, Calgary plans to reintroduce fluoride in 2025. Other places in the world that have removed it tend to replace it in other ways, such as increasing it in their toothpaste. So removing the fluoride in our drinking water would most likely result in increased dental costs for the average family, an increased level of tooth decay, especially in children and the elderly, and general disparity in oral health, especially in low-income communities. So there you go. Fluoride seems to have much more benefits and little to no downsides. Getting fluoride or fluorine in really high amounts does tend to be toxic. However, none of the types of fluoride we use tend to have any neurotoxic effects. Chlorine is a gas that is highly corrosive, reactive, and toxic to inhale. Sodium is also highly reactive and will even explode on contact with water. But if you put them together, you get table salt, which is perfectly safe to eat. The element itself doesn't act the same way, nor have the same effects when it's combined into a molecule. And even things that are good for us will be very toxic in high enough amounts. Water is essential for life and it's important to drink it every single day. However, water intoxication is a fatal condition caused by drinking too much water. No, not drowning, just drinking too much water. Oxygen is essential for us to breathe, however, it's only a small amount of the air we breathe. If we were to enter a room with too high of a concentration of oxygen, we would eventually pass out and then... Be sure to share this video and thanks for watching.